Okay, hello everyone and welcome to my presentation of our paper Forward Backward Convolutional Recurrent Neural Networks and Tech Conditioned Convolutional Neural Networks for Weekly Labeled Semi-Supervised Sound Event Detection. My name is Janek Ebers and I'm the first author of this contribution. Although the title is kind of lengthy, it exactly describes what I'm going to present. We propose two models, namely the Forward Backward CNN and the Tech Conditioned CNN and we apply it to the task four of this year's DKS challenge. This task deals with sound event detection. Here, given an input audio, we'd like to recognize all sounds in the audio and also detect their onsets and offsets. However, for training, we only have weak labels, which means we do not have the information about the onsets and offsets. We only have the information about the presence or absence of an event in a clip. This is in contrast to strong labels, where strong labels also provide the onsets and offsets of the events. The task also deals with semi-supervised learning, where in addition to little weekly labeled data, there's unlabeled data, which can be used to improve performance. However, this contribution, this contribution focuses on weak label learning. And for that, we start with the convolutional recurrent neural network for audio tagging. Audio tagging means prediction of weak labels. And here our aim is to train the audio tagging system such that it can afterwards also be applied to very short segments of only a few hundred milliseconds, which would then enable us to perform sound event detection. And our start point here is the CRNN audio tagging system that we proposed in last year's DCase workshop, where we have a CNN uh, processing a log mile band energy spectrogram and is extracting features H. We have a recurrent neural network, which is processing the whole sequence of features here. And at the, at the last frame, we have a fully connected network, which is predicting the weak labels here. And so we only evaluate the loss at the last frame. However, there's a drawback with this training scheme due to the fact that we only evaluate the loss at the last frame. The model learns that it can gather information over a long time because it only have, has to provide an accurate prediction at the last frame. And this is illustrated here. So in that case, we have an event cat between second six and eight. And we see that the model actually processes nearly the whole event before making a positive prediction. This means due to the fact that it learns to gather information over a long time, it cannot apply to very short segments. To encourage the model to make immediate predictions, uh, one might think to simply do the loss evaluation at each frame. However, this would mean that for events that appear only at the end of, an, of a signal, as here, the cat can be seen here in the spectrogram, that would mean we would force the model to predict the event prior to the event. So it has to predict the event before it has processed it. This is the wet area here. And this uh, might degrade performance. Therefore, we propose to use, to combine two RNNs, one processing the signal in forward direction and the other in backward direction. And we combine it to jointly predict tags at each frame so that we can apply frame-wise loss. Uh, an important point here is that it is not a bidirectional RNN as these two RNNs do not exchange hidden representations. So each separate RNN uh, and FCN combination has to do its own prediction. And the only, and the combination of those predictions is only the maximum uh, operation here. With this training scheme, actually the forward tagging RNN or the forward model can make the predictions in forward direction after it has processed the event. However, for frames prior to this event, as said, the forward RNN can't uh, make these predictions, but the backward RNN can, because we started the uh, last frame and processed the sequence backwards, the RNN can uh, make the predictions like as soon as it has processed the event in backwards direction. So we can apply a frame-wise loss, and both models are encouraged to uh, make predictions also for shorter segments than those segments seen in training. Okay, to further illustrate this, we again have here our activity cat. Uh, 
And we see that the forward checking actually learns to directly as soon as the event occurs to make the positive prediction here. Same for the backward checking, only that the signal is processed in backward direction. So as soon as the event appears, which is at the offset here, uh, the backward checking uh, model does the positive prediction. And with the maximum, maximum operation, we see here in the bottom that we are able to make a tech prediction at each point in time. Um, however, this is only for training at test time. We only want to have one prediction for the whole signal. And here we combine the uh, last prediction of the forward tagging, which is at the last frame, and the last prediction of the backward tagging, which is at the first frame. And uh, yeah, simply average those two predictions. <clears throat> now, as said, we want to apply this model to sound event detection. Therefore, we, for each frame, we, we use a specific context, a small context of only a few hundred milliseconds, which is illustrated with, the, um, with this black window here. Um, and we see that all the sound event detection at each point is always like the uh, tagging performance on this small, uh, small black window. And the width of the window is your hyperparameter, which can be uh, event specific. And we see that the model actually does a pretty good job in this example here to predict the cat activity. Okay, let, uh, let me come to the second model, which is the tech condition CNN. Here we again have the input spectrogram and here we want to predict strong labels. But additionally to the input spectrogram, we also provide tags as input. So we basically condition the CNN on tags. The idea is that given the reliable tag predictions from the forward backward CNN, like only the tag predictions, not the uh, event detection, uh, the CNN uh, should refine the tags to strong predictions. Uh, the tags are, the tag conditioning is done by concatenating a multi-hot tag encoding here. And for training, as said, we train it to provide strong uh, predictions. We don't have strong predictions in the training data, however, and therefore we use sort of strong labels, which is provided by the forward backward CNN. So we use the forward backward CNN to generate the conditioning, the tags, but we also use the sound event detection of the forward backward CNN to provide sort of strong labels for training. And the idea is simply that the conditioning, the condition probability that event is active in frame, given, given it is active in the recording, is easier than the prediction of the unconditioned probability. Okay, for experiments, as said, we applied the models to the task four of this year's DCAS challenge. Um, for evaluation, we primarily used the public YouTube evaluation set from the last year's challenge, and we also uh, report the results from the official ranking wherever this is private, so we cannot do any further evaluations with that. In the following, I'm showing some details about feature extraction and training, which I don't, I won't discuss here. However, feel free to pause and have a look. And I will go over to the evaluations. And here I start with the single model evaluations. For all experiments, we, or we carried out all experiments five times and report the mean and the standard deviation of the results. As evaluation metric, we use the uh, F1 score and for detection, we use event-based F1 score. And we have different settings here, which I will explain step-by-step. Step. The first model here is the CRNN, which is processing the signal, the input signal only in forward direction. And here we only apply a loss at the last frame. So we can see that the model gives good tagging performance, but fails to do detection. If we add a frame-wise loss, but still only do the forward tagging, we see that the detection can be improved, but the tagging performance uh, degrades. This is due to the fact that we force the model to predict uh, events before it has processed it, which is essentially label noise. If we apply our proposed forward backward CNN, which also has the frame wise loss, we see that we can further improve 
detection performance significantly, and we're actually also able to improve tagging performance. And now the next line is your semi-supervised learning, where we use the first forward backward CNN to, uh, to label the unlabeled data with weak labels, like pseudo weak labels, and we train the forward backward CNN on those. And we see that we can further improve the performance by uh, seven percent in the detection and three percent in the tagging. So now let me come to the CNN evaluation. So we compare two CNNs here. First, here the unconditioned CNN, so without being conditioned on tags, and the last CNN here is the tag conditioning. And uh, the FB CNN, this with the sort of labeled data, this one was used to provide the strong labels for training. And also for the tech conditioned, it is used to provide the text for the conditioning. Comparing the CNNs to the other models, it can be seen that actually both CNNs are able to improve performance over the forward backward CNN here. And it can further be seen that the tech conditioning outperforms the unconditioned CNN by more than 3%. Okay, let's have a look at this, the system comparison. So first, we have here the baseline of this year then the winner system from the last year, which actually uh, reports performance on the YouTube evaluation set. And then the winner from this year, which has reports performance on the validation set and the official evaluation set from uh, this year. So this is uh, a value from the official ranking. And then here's our submitted system. Uh, let, me first of, uh, let, me, let me first explain the names of the ensembles here. So we have the forward backward CNN ensembles and CNN ensembles, which each use four independently trained models for sound event detection. And the hybrid models combines uh, the sound event detection from four, four uh, FB CNNs and four CNNs. So our, high, uh, our submitted model, submitted model actually used an uh, on the fly pseudo labeling while those last three models here used uh, static pseudo labeling as described before. And we can see that actually the static pseudo labeling improves performance uh, by yeah, nearly 4%, uh, no, by more than 4%. And uh, comparing our models to each other, we see that the forward backwards CNN already does a pretty good job and outperforms, for example, the winner system from last year. Using the CNN, we can further boost performance by more than 4% on the evaluation set. And combining the sound event detections from both ensembles to the hybrid, which is the last year, we get another small gain. In total, we can see that on the validation set, we are able to outperform uh, the baseline by 18%. And we are even able to now outperform the winner system from this year by 2.2% due to the, uh, the static pseudo labeling and some minor improvements in hyperparameter tuning. To conclude, we presented two models. The first was the forward backward convolutional recurrent neural network, where we have two sub models, one performing forward tagging, the other performing backward tagging. And by joint training using weak labels, we encourage the models to also work with very small segments. So this enabled sound event detection. Uh, the second model was the tech condition convolutional neural network, which is trained using pseudo strong labels from the forward backward CNN and also is conditioned on tags provided by the forward backward CNN and was able to improve uh, sound event detection performance significantly. Our model scored the third place in the uh, official ranking of the task and with subsequent uh, improvements and further tuning, we are now able to even outperform the winner system by 2.2% event-based uh, F1 score on the validation set. Our source code is available online. And thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.